In the past, I demonstrated how you can control or restrict a large portion of your traffic to specific availability zones in order to reduce the costs associated with egress cross zone traffic. And remember, this is especially useful in highly available architectures because your workloads and infrastructure are spread across different AZs for fault tolerance and resilience. But there are cases where controlling traffic at a zonal level just won't suffice. What if there's a desire to reduce costs along with the added requirement of reducing latency between certain applications that have a lot of frequent intercommunication? In order to get the desired performance and reduce costs, we need a way to restrict traffic at a node level. For example, microservice A should always talk to microservice B on the same node, even in highly available setups. Having microservice A on node one talk to microservice B on node two can have some impact on the desired performance of this particular application, especially if node two is in a separate AZ altogether. And that's where service internal traffic policies can help. Remember, services are the stable network abstraction layer that sit in front of pods and proxy traffic to pods based on the available endpoints listed in the endpoint slices. By default, traffic sent to an application service will be randomly distributed across the different generated endpoints for a given application. So in a highly available architecture, that means traffic from microservice A could go to any replica of microservice B on any given node across the different AZs. However, with the service's internal traffic policy set to local, traffic will be restricted to endpoints within the node that the traffic originated from. By implication, your network traffic related costs for that application or workload will be lower compared to a cluster wide distribution. Also, the latency will be a lot lower, making your application more performant. But there are a few things that you still have to consider. Because this policy dictates the exclusive use of node local endpoints, you want to make sure that you have enough replicas for each of the communicating applications, as well as somewhat of an even spread of the peer apps that need to talk to each other. Let's say you have two replicas of microservice A and three replicas of microservice B. If microservice A has its replicas spread between nodes one and two, and microservice B has all three replicas on node three, then they won't be able to communicate because of the internal traffic policy. When there are no available node local endpoints, the traffic is dropped completely. What if microservice B does have two of its three replicas on nodes one and two? Well, this is better because there will be communication between the peer applications, but you still have a single replica of microservice B isolated on node three without any peer service to communicate with. That replica is still consuming CPU and memory on the node. And if it has any accompanying components like a sidecar proxy, then it's even more resource consumption. And the more you have of these, the more you pay for underlying infrastructure like nodes or storage that aren't being used because your replica has no peer to communicate with. Now, in some cases, this may not be an issue at all because the replica still serves some purpose as a standalone service or application. But if it's a microservice whose purpose is directly tied to communication with another, then it's a problem for it to just sit there, consume resources and increase costs. So using this policy in conjunction with topology spread constraints can be useful so that you have replicas of peer applications on the different nodes. With topology spread constraints, you can make sure you have the right max skew setting. Remember, the max skew is the degree of imbalance or inequality across your topology so that you have something close to an even spread of replicas across the different nodes or hosts. Another approach is to make use of pod affinity with the service internal traffic policy. With pod affinity, you can essentially inform the scheduler to co-locate certain pods because of their frequent intercommunication. By applying strict scheduling constraints on certain pods, this will give you more sure results for that pod co-location when they're being placed on certain nodes, and you'll avoid a situation of a pod being isolated, which will eventually impact the application's performance and cost. That's enough talk. Let's see what this looks like in action. All right, let's start by walking through the code. Both the orders and products microservices have zonal topology spread constraints. What we're looking at here is orders. And if I click on the products.yaml file, here's the topology spread constraint that is in place. So because of this, you'll see later on that the different pod replicas are spread across different hosts or nodes in different AZs. Also, 
the GraphQL microservice has a single replica, whereas orders has four replicas, as you can see here, and products, if I scroll up slightly, has three. Now I'm gonna turn back to the orders.yaml file and scroll up to focus on the service resource and specifically the internal traffic policy, which as you can see is set to local. With this in place, the internal traffic routed to the order service will be distributed to available endpoints local to the same node. In my example, the single GraphQL replica that sends or distributes traffic to the order service will respect this policy. And the reason for the single GraphQL replica is just to simplify the process of testing and deducing results from the internal traffic policy that I'm applying to the order service. In a normal scenario, I would have multiple replicas for the GraphQL service as well. Next, I'm going to focus on a particular script that fetches all the e-commerce pods, that is GraphQL orders and products, from the e-commerce dedicated nodes. And the script executes the same kubectl command, which you can see here, kubectl get pods from the namespace e-commerce. And I'm specifying a field selector here for the different nodes. And I iterate this a couple of times to make sure that I fetch all the relevant pods across the different e-commerce nodes. And as you can see, I wanna print the results to a text file. If I scroll up and just show you this text file, it is currently empty because I will run the script shortly. And the point of this is to get and see the e-commerce pods running on the respective nodes in my topology setup. So I'm gonna go ahead and execute or run this script. That was a previous execution, I'm gonna clear that. And now if I come to the test results.txt file, you can see here that I have a single GraphQL replica running on this particular node, and it shares that node with two other orders microservices or replicas. I'm gonna highlight orders so that you can see that orders also appears on two other nodes. We've got one here and one over here. Now our other microservice is products. I'm gonna highlight that so we can see that there's a single replica on three different nodes. Next, I'm going to focus on four other scripts. And the only difference between these scripts is the pod replica that I specify and the node that the particular replica is running on, but they are exactly the same outside of these variables. Now, the purpose of these scripts is to capture the network packet activity for each of the order's replicas. You can see here that I am using ksniff, which integrates with Wireshark to capture the packet activity. Now, I'm gonna quickly confirm that each of these replicas exists in the text file, which has my pod results. So, I'm gonna do that now. All right, so I'm going to run the scripts one at a time. I have confirmed that I've accounted for each order's replica. And after running each script, I will run a collection in Postman. I'm going to open up Postman. And what you see over here is my e-commerce collection. There's a single GET request that is going to be run. And this is the query over here. I'm going to fetch orders. And as a nested query, I'm also going to fetch the product associated with a particular order. But that's not so important for our particular case. We are interested in orders. So the first replica that will be hit will be the GraphQL um, replica. Remember, we have a single instance of that. And it will then reach out to orders in order to fulfill this particular request. I'm just going to quickly hit send here to ensure that this is working. Great, so that means we can proceed. Now for each test iteration, I'll run the collection 100 times so that that can show that we've got enough requests to account for to see what the distribution actually looks like and if our internal traffic policy is working. And so we'll then look at Wireshark to see which orders replicas are actually receiving network traffic from the GraphQL replica when it gets hit a hundred times. 
All right, now I'm going to test the packet capturing for each of the replicas, starting with this one in this particular script. And if you pay close attention, you can see that this replica is running on this node over here. So I'm going to head over to my terminal. I'm going to run that. So it looks like everything is in place. Wireshark is running and we are monitoring the traffic activity. So I'm going to open up Postman and now I'm going to run the collection a hundred times and let's see if that orders replica gets any traffic. You can see that the, the requests were successful. I'm getting 200 responses, which is good for each of the hundred requests. I'm gonna open up Wireshark again and you can see that there is absolutely no traffic that has been captured for the first replica that we were monitoring, which is this one running on this fourth node over here. Let me just highlight. So you can see it is not running on the same node as the GraphQL replica. So I'm going to end that. That's been cleaned up. So the next test is going to be for this second script over here. Let's see where this replica is running. So this is also on a separate node from the GraphQL replica. Once again, Wireshark is up and running. We're monitoring traffic activity. And again, I'm going to run 100 requests using the same collection. You can see that I am getting 200 responses, meaning this, the requests are successful. I'm gonna open up Wireshark. Once again, no traffic whatsoever. If I head back here, see, so we will, so far we have seen that the orders replicas on separate nodes from the GraphQL replica are not receiving any traffic because of that traffic policy. But the final step in the test is to see if these two orders replicas are actually going to receive traffic from the GraphQL replica. So these two are the last ones that I'm going to run. Let's take a look at Wireshark. And you can see that there is traffic headed towards this particular orders replica that we are monitoring. And if we just highlight one of them over here, you can see the request to orders getting 200 responses, the same over there. And that's the case for a lot of these requests that are sent. You can see that there's a lot of traffic that we're able to capture and you can see the get request to orders over there. So this time we have seen positive results for this particular replica, which is running on the same node. It is this one to be specific. Oh, let's be careful over there. It is this one running on the same node as the GraphQL. So we're gonna run the last one over there, which I'm calling sniff four. And let's see if that will be successful as well. Great, so clean slate. Let's go ahead and run the collection and see what we get. 100 times, just like the others. I'm gonna open up Wireshark and there you have it. And you can see that there is traffic being received by this particular order's replica. So that means that our traffic policy is working because our GraphQL replica is only sending traffic to these two replicas that it shares a node with. And we've seen the results testing it out with KSniff and Wireshark monitoring our packet activity for the respective orders replicas. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope you found that helpful. Feel free to provide feedback in the comment section below and stay tuned for more.